<laughs> hey people, it's Broken Puppet, and this is how to draw a neo traditional bear from view. Enjoy. Right, people, how to draw a neo traditional bear from view. Now, I've done a side view one, but this one's from view, and it's uh, very different than this from view. There's a lot of different details, so the whole face kind of changes. But I'll start with. Just get yourself a line going right down the centre. Get yourself a nice big circle. Get okay, roughly even on both sides. Just keep working it around until you look at it and you think, yeah, that's roughly even. Once you got that, around here. Bring it over shape so it sits comfortably with inside this. Just there. Bring a little one on the side. Little one on the side. Big one below, uh, just below. So it comes out roughly about the same length sort of as the uh, circle up here. Slightly smaller oval, just at the bottom of that. And then, sort of from the centre of this, what you want to do, we've got this uh, centre circle. Come down and curve out just a little bit, you know, as you get to the centre of it. Even on both sides. From that, curve out and up. Above these uh, two, well, we're going to be eyes. Just do two sausage shapes, slightly curved. Slightly overlapping just that top part of those circles. Bring a little loop just up in the centre part, connecting up with this circle. Just there. Off, the, off this curve, just bringing a big circle, coming around each one of these eyes. Like so, this side here, bring in a big circle, your next one coming down, coming sort of towards this little chin, about halfway through this chin. Come on out just about as wide as the big circle we've done to begin with. Just there. Everyone curving out, back onto this circle. There's a lot of different shapes. This is what makes the the uh, bear neo traditional and like really cool looking. Little one just off the edge bit here, and now I'll come off this bottom bit. I want you to curve out from here, curve down, and when you get to the centre bit, I just want you to curve down a touch. Curve that out. Curve that there. There you go. That circle, and you want to bring. One circle coming out and over, kind of dipping down a touch in the sense of it. So you want it to kind of go out the circle and around. So we can create this kind of head shape. No, because this head shape, you want this little dip just in the center. Off the sides here, just kind of curve off of it. And then turn your curve around and come back on yourself. So you just create a loop. And then you stop back here. Just curve a line coming back down slightly wider. Do the same on both sides. So like so. For this one I might have an arrow going through his head or something. Coming down there. And pretty coming down through his chin. American like Indian head ones at the bottom, possibly. But we'll see. I haven't decided on that one completely yet. Right. And now me, I like to start off with the nose. Now the nose, I want roughly a short line connecting the bottom of the eyes. That sort of line there. Curve a little bit across. And make it a sort of triangular curve shape with it. Like so. Give me a 
slightly darker pencil now so you can see a bit clearly. So you can see this is the uh, going to be a nose. I start with a nose, it's always a good point to start with the centre. It just gives you a good sort of point to even everything out nicely. So if they line up the middle of it, get that curve to the side, just there. Now in the centre of this, you're going to make a curve. Now you want it to sort of come back so it curves almost circular in this bit. You know, you don't want it to sort of start halfway and just be like a semicircle. You want it to be a bit more than a semicircle. Just go over there to there. Same thing on the other side in about the same sort of position. So there. Now what I like to do is when I get to the stop bit. Bring this back as if you were going to sort of join them up. And when you get here, just create a dip curve. So just dip and curve to join those ones up. And what I do is just a little curve just over the top. That kind of appear like a highlight. And what you're going to do now, we've got this curve at the bottom just here. You're going to reinforce this, and reinforce this curve. So this one's going to come around here and this is going to curve into the nose. Come around here. Now once you get here, I want you to turn this curve back on itself. So come to a point, stop, curve back, curve up, and into that center line. So we're just creating that position for that mouth to sit in. Just like so. So on the side, just get yourself two fangs in there. And then I like to add about six teeth in the middle. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So just six sleeps. Just come in that centerpiece. Bring that line up in the center, get up here, and when you get here, just curve it. Don't want no sharp point there. Curve back down. This is where the eye is going to be. So just, I'm just shaping it up again, you know, just so you can sort of see clearly where it is. No, but the top bit is going to be cut off with this eyebrow part. So what we're going to do here, going to bring in a curve. Going to curve up like so. So you're going to cut through a little bit of the eye, just there, and you're going to take this bit over. Come slightly out further than the eye, and what you want to do is curve this line, that sausage shape now that we've done before, coming around. Don't connect up with this bit here. I like it to go around and go there. You can if you want it, but I prefer it to go like that, so it looks like a section for the eye. Just underneath that, just create a little highlight that's underneath the eye. So just mimic your line underneath your eye a bit wider. And then bring another down, that one's going to be sort of blacked out pretty much, like a little shadow underneath the eye. What we're going to do here, let's create these cheeks. Just bring in two lines for now, coming up. Bring in a little curve line we've done just there. So a little bit of gum just the way it sort of curves out. And this is going to go up here. Now this line, it's going to come up into that part of the eye just there. And now a lot of these lines are going to be furry. This one I'm probably not going to make furry. You know, I want to make furry, I'm going to do this little kind of line texture coming across. I want some to have that set uh, texture, but I don't want all of them to. You know, I generally feel when you have all of them like that, it kind of gets a bit lost. Like I'll show you, I'm just going to do the one just here, just for now. It's going to be in line, line, line. Slightly bigger line, 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 slightly bigger line. And just curve with this shape until we come around. So you're creating a line of lines, basically. Just down. Now where you got this circle by the bottom, I'm going to cut a line, just come through this bottom part like so. Thicken it up so it's like a long sausage shape. And that's going to be your gum. 
of that is where your teeth are going to sit. Now this fang is going to come out quite wide. It's going to come back and it's going to curve early like so. Because the way his mouth sticking out, you know, the top the bottom jaw is slightly more exposed with the teeth. You can do the same on the other side. It's going to come here. Two, three, four. You can have six, but it's pretty much only sort of sized up for four in this one. Keep this side gun bit. Easy way to measure up, measuring this gap here. You want to make sure this gap's here as well. And then you pretty much get the right size. Everything I'll do on one side, I'm going to do on the other side. So we're going to have that. In here you will have some tongue. So just create like a loop. Probably have a loop in a bit on the outside, like so. Just curve to the edge. Little line up center. Like so. Create a line across, connecting these two curve bits. Little curve underneath, like so. This bit here will get blacked out, so don't worry too much about that section. Underneath this chin, we're just going to create this loop in line, just connecting them up. Like so. Now for this one, I'm going to do the same kind of line as this. So basically my design is going to be made up of three different style lines. This kind of hair, this kind of hair, and a straight line. And then the reason for this is we'll just break up and just make different kind of sections, giving a different kind of vibe to it. So you won't have too much of a repeat, you know, repeating pattern the whole way through. You know, sometimes repeating like pattern does look good, but sometimes it is just overkill. Sometimes you see little areas you just feel like you need another curve, so I'm going to put a little curve just in there, just to build up that part. Let's bring up this little line just there, we're done. Just going to get in this ear now. So just line that in. And what I do is just have some hair bit just coming on the inside, like so. And I'll go to that side. And this one would curve coming out. Like so. So you can see it really starting to build up now. And got the basic shape all in there. So I'm just going to refine and just add the exact same stuff onto the other side now. So it gets nice and symmetric. Just sketching this in because I'm going to go over obviously with my pen. Didn't shade it in. I'm looking at it, I don't think it needs the arrow, so I'm not going to put the arrow in. But I might do like a little bit of a flower, sort of, you know. Just here, add a bit of colour. A little bit here, just to contrast a bit of colour. Just like so. So I'm going to do now, I'm going to start off with a sharpie. Get all my thick lines in there, and I come back and refine with the uh, thinner line details I want.
So as you can see, unless you're just going over all this line work, or well, the main bits that I want to stand out. See, slowly just burn up all these little line bits. Yeah, so that's your basic bold outline. If I can find in case you haven't realized my biggest flaw is probably the fact that I'm so disorganized with my stuff. When I draw I literally just have my pens everywhere. So yeah, so it's gonna have this little detail bits in now. And the second line uh, where it just really does add such a difference. So I'm just going to connect like this line up here, just put this little curved line. It's just a little detail, but it's just where I feel like it needs it, like just here. Little curved line just to give a hint to change the shape. Certain things that I want there, but not I don't want them to be too prominent. So these little detail lines just in between these larger ones. Just like I said, to get a different line feel. So you kind of create like almost patterns with your lines. And by varying it up, it just creates different type of patterns. And so they can complement each other and not be too busy. 
And sometimes, like I said, if you have the same pattern too much, it just is overkill and just doesn't look right. and ears This last few little detail bits like just a little hint of a line just on the inside of this curve. A couple of dots just for this bit. And then just rub out that pencil work over the bit. And that's how you draw a bear's face. That's the line work. So I'm going to use my trusty markers as I always do. You can use whatever you feel like. Paints, pencils, watercolours, markers. You know, just whatever takes your fancy. Now I'm just going to flick in some black here. I'm not going to touch this line. I'm going to leave a little gap there. I'm going to leave a little gap between this line. Just so there's a little highlight. And some other thing just to the top bit. It's going to come there. Just avoid certain edges. With the markers, I'm just using no, just using Winsor and Newton brush markers. And I'm going to work down the grays. I've got some gray tones. And that's the reason to get to. And I'm just going to work those over the black. People ask me what a paper is. Paper is just like a basic kind of craft paper. It's not really designed for drawing on, I guess. You know, it's more of a, like a display book sort of thing, like for photographs. But, you know, ignore the rule book when it comes to stuff like art equipment and that. You know, just if it works for you and you want to use it a certain way, use it that way. Don't feel like you have to stick to the standard way, you know, they tell you to use it. So, you see, just blending out that with a light grey. Looking in this grey bit in these nostrils. Now I'm going to get my black and I'm just going to flick it in certain areas, just little corners and little bits I want to bring out. So just here between this gap. And there. In this gap, I'd like some black. One of the years, maybe. Maybe 
bit just down the centre. And that will blend out as it goes across, so that won't be as prominent as it is in a minute. A little bit just in this gum section. A little bit down from here because this obviously sits underneath this cheek bit. A little bit from the bottom. Let's apply the back here and it's going to black out. Just give me a pro marker for just solid bold. A little bit like here, maybe this bit behind this cheek. You know, just kind of make up as you go along, just pick certain ones out. Now, if it doesn't work this time round, you know, next time to do it differently. But you can't really go wrong, especially when you're sort of just doing like corner bots. You know, don't be afraid to sort of try different techniques and different ways of doing it. Inside the air. So now I've done that, let's get my greys, I'm just going to blend those out. After making use using a side to side motion, once you get to the end of it, you know, my greys pretty much because these are just like, you know, uh, grey tones. Uh, the darkest one's pretty close to the black, so it's quite easy to blend out. Let's sort of use a side to side motion to really blend out into the lighter ones. Like so. That's me. And remember as well, on this paper, these markers will wet it. So it will originally come out darker and go lighter. Like this bit here will probably fade out to nothing. But. You want to try and remember that and not try overwork it because if you overwork it, you're going to put it in there and it's just going to ruin it. So put it on, get it to how you like it, let it dry and just see how it looks before you do your next step. And remember, the colour will blend it out as well. So you see, it's just a repeating pattern, you know, just going over it, creating a side to side motion after a bit towards the edge. Using that to blend in your next tone. Like I said, these are just Windsor and brush markers. You can buy these little sets, you know. The one set pretty much has all like the kind of grey tones you need. Just buy like the 12 set or something. It's not expensive, they're fairly cheap to use. You know, it's not like it's gonna cost you hundreds or something like that, you know, probably looking about, I don't know. 10, 15 quid. Can't see it being more than that. So you can really see it sort of coming together now. Grey. 
I'm just going to get some black and just flick it underneath this these teeth and just blend this out. I will recommend getting like a, if you're using markers, like slightly thicker paper. You know, I'm not really a fan of like, you know, like the thin bleed proof paper, you know, it's, I know it's designed for markers, I just don't like it. But, try a different few bits of paper, see how it works for you. you know, I don't really worry too much about bleed through, you know, bleed through is your paper, you just put a bit of paper underneath and it blocks it. You know, I mean, who cares if the other side of the paper is like a bit round. bit of shadow just on certain parts just with the light grey over here and I'm just leaving a little highlight just around the edge of it why? Just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. Just make it shading up as you go along. If you think something might look cool, just try it. If it doesn't, change it. Shadow on his lip. There we go. So you can see that's it for the black and grey shading. I'm just going to get some brown tones. Do it. Do it. Do it. Some brown tones, maybe a bit of blue, some red. Bit of purple, maybe a bit of orange, and maybe a bit of yellow. We should do the trick. To start with, we'll do the um, yeah, do brown bits first. So we're gonna make them grizzly, so it's gonna be a brown grizzly bear. Just gonna flick in a brown. This one's burnt sienna. Just wipe down my tones, just fading it out. Just building up each little section bit by bit. thing in one go if you want but with these kind of ones I like to build it up bit by bit so these section kind of feels unique and sort of separate I like to make this bit and a bit around the eyes lighter than the rest. I might even throw a bit of blue in there just for the hell of it. But you see, by doing this separately now, I can kind of make this bit separate. 
for distinguishing like you know where the uh, shadow goes working with these browns. I do browns first and I put on the other colours. But you want to make sure you do add our colours. You don't want just the entire thing to be brown. It doesn't ever have to be brown. You could do like a black bear, you know, you could do pretty much any colour you want. You know, I don't feel like you're restricted to certain things or certain colours. So this top section is a little bit differently because what I want is to feel like this curve across the top. So bring my shadow from the sides, but I'm also bringing it across that top. Good thing about these markers, you know, especially like you know the Windsor Newton Copics, you know, Trio Flex markers and those kind of ones, is the brush tip. This kind of tip. You know, pro markers and some other cheap markers don't have brush tips, which makes it a lot more awkward to use. You know. I mean you can still use I mean you see me do my blending technique, you know, from use with a blender, which can be pretty effective. But you don't get the artistic flick you can do, you know, with these ones, you know, you can get really Flick the colour in and sort of like get a sense of control over it. So you see, this brown's almost in there now. Show you the uh, blending technique in case you haven't seen it. I use on a few little bits just here. Let's get yourself a blender, like a marker blender, pro marker. Hold it to the tip, the th you know, the fine tip. Hold it to the edge, quite firmly. One, two, three, four. Until you see the tip of the uh, marker go white. Have a little bit of paper, just test it, see if it looks see through. If it's see through, it's ready to go. Work it down, and eventually that colour will come through. Just keep working side to side, and you get a really cool fade out. See the blue fade into it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It'd be wet and you'll see when this fades it'd be lighter in the middle with the blue on the bottoms. You should notice that by the time I finish this. It takes a little while for them to dry but not too long. comes out quite faint and I'm thinking maybe I need a stronger one for this. I usually like the faint purple on this kind of paper but it's not doing what I want today so I'm a stronger purple. So inside gum bit. Just go over that. Blue. Don't forget, you can always do that markers as well, you know, if a colour isn't quite the way you like it, you can always mix two colours, just go over the top. Then just leave a little highlight so you kind of feel like the gum's got a bit of shine to it. What do you hear? I think it's just a little bit of blue just in that centerpiece as well. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure you hold the marker up this way as well. If you hold it the other way, it bleeds through to the, to the uh, blender, which you don't want. Purple for those nostrils. Yeah, I think I have to use a bit of blue for his eyebrows. Let's 
gonna grab me yellow, put a little bit of yellow in the teeth. Pinkish tone. That's pretty inside of the air. Can do some flowery bits. And crazy. just add a little bit of colour. Nothing crazy, just some basic flowers. So it puts to work. Grab me a fine liner. Just. I've done tutorials on how to draw these kind of flowers before, so I'm not really going to go into too much detail. Red straps across the top and just cut it down from that. Orange in the center. Give me black. Just kind of look back, sort of circle a bit in the middle. Grays. Take your time on this, I'm kind of rushing this because towards the end, just trying to get it finished. Get yourself green.
And lastly, just a little bit of orange to the spikes. But yeah, there you go. That is how to draw a neo traditional bear from view. I hope you like it. Check out my videos, subscribe, comment, yada 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 yada. You guys know how to use your routine. I'm the Broken Puppet, and I'll see you next time. Peace.